All right, this is gonna be a video of a series of videos, um, kind of how-tos for uh, people that are new to the hobby and want to be able to do these things on their own. Um, this one in particular is going to be how to set up your flight controller. Sorry, I was getting a message on my phone. Uh, this is gonna be how to set up your flight controller and your quad in the Betaflight configurator. Um, I'll also have some other videos like showing you how to flash different flight controllers to Betaflight, um, how to get into DFU mode to flash if you need to do bootloader. Um, God dang it. Sorry. Um, okay, so <sighs> first thing I'm going to do, so I'm not going to be showing you how to flash right now or how to get your drivers. I'll do those videos another time. Um, another video will be how to get all the correct drivers that you need if you don't have them. This is just going to be if you already am, are able to connect to Betaflight and you already have the Betaflight configurator. Um, maybe I should have started with my first video being downloading the Betaflight configurator, but I guess I could show you real quick in here. But anyway, I'm going to plug in my quad. Okay. So I got it plugged into the Armatan 155. It has the Malta Rotor Mania Mantis in it. So first, if you don't have the Betaflight configurator, uh, you need to Google um, Betaflight Configurator. That's all you need to type in. Betaflight Configurator. Google search. You want the one that says Chrome Web Store, which is the top one. Click on it. And up here will be where it says download. But I already have it downloaded, so instead it says launch app. But that's where you download it and open it. Okay, so pretty simple. Um, then once you have it, you want to, and you got your quad plugged in. I want sound glasses. You want to click connect. I don't have any right now, sorry. You can have my hat. So the first thing that I do is I go to ports and I set up I use a uh, spectrum satellite receiver well a lemon satellite but it's DSMX so I want UART 2 serial receiver checked because on this particular flight controller UART 2 is the serial receiver port so I have that checked uh, a lot of newer flight controllers will have UART 3. Well, not a lot. I'm just, some of them have UART 3 and some of them are UART 2. I've seen more have UART, have it on UART 3 than UART 2, but this one's a little bit different, so it's on UART 2. Um, so I got that checked. I'll, I would go down here and click Save and Reboot. And then the next thing I would go to is Configuration. And here... Um, my ESCs, they're DYS XM20 amps, but I have them flashed to multi-shot. That'll be another video too, how to flash your ESCs to multi-shot if they're um, able to. If they're BL Heli S ESCs, they will already have multi-shot on them and you can just select multi-shot here or even D-shot if you have newer ESCs that do D-shot. Or if you have an older ESC that is just BL Heli and you haven't flashed multi-shot to it, then you're probably going to want to pick one shot 125. So once you got that picked, I use a uh, motor PWM speed separated from pit speed and I have it set to 8000 because that's just what work, works best for me. You can try it different ways and see how your quad flies. Um, I use motor stop and I use arm on a switch, so I have both of those selected. This 
used to be how many seconds before the motors disarm, but I'm not sure if it's because of the new newest beta flight that I have on here or um, the flight controller or something that makes it, or maybe it's the ESCs, I'm not sure, but it doesn't disarm after 10 seconds. It doesn't ever disarm until you, or maybe it's because I have it on a switch, arm on a switch. I think that might be why. If you have arm on a switch, then this is irrelevant, I'm pretty sure. Um, I never mess with the center stick, it's always 1500. My minimum throttle I usually have between 1030 and 1040. Um, stock on here is 1070, which is just a little bit high for me. But it's whatever you like, whatever you prefer, whatever works for your motors. Um, you can go into the motors tab and move each motor up and see where it starts to spin the smoothest and set it to that. Um, the maximum throttle 2000, minimum command 1000. And then here, your board alignment. And this is if you need to turn your flight controller to one side or the other to get access to the USB. Now, this flight controller has the USB pointing out to the right side, and that's facing forward. So I don't need to change anything in the board alignment. But if you have one that has a USB coming out the back and you want it on the side, then you'll have to turn it. If you turn it to where the USB is on the right side, then in here you're going to want to type in, um, I think, negative 90 or uh, 180. I'm, I don't remember which one. And then if you want it on the left side, it's just 90. Um, and uh, the way that I figure this out, and you can do this too, is just type in a number and then click save and reboot and then go to setup and move your quad back and forth and if it's not turning the correct way on the screen as the way you're turning it then you need to go back and change the number and then just keep doing that until it is turning the correct way um, you could also put it upside down if you put it upside down you want this change to 180 I'm pretty sure um, like I said, you can just change the numbers and then go back to setup and see if it's moving the right way. Then the receiver tab, since I use a satellite, I'll have it on serial. That's also for S bus <laughs> and uh, some other stuff. Um, my opinion, serial is better than PPM. PPM is slower. Serial is good. Now when I use my satellite, I need to determine, it depends on if it's DSM-2 or DSM-X, you'll need to switch between these two. Or if you're using S-Bus, you put on S-Bus, or any, whatever you're using, you put it on that. Um, I use DSM-X and it's mostly 2048, but sometimes you go into the receiver tab and you turn on your radio and if, this, if these bars aren't moving the correct way, then you need to make sure that this is on the correct thing. And then you need to go into ports and make sure that you have the correct UART set up for your receiver. And then you need to go into configuration and make sure that this is correct. This one and this one. So if, if the bars aren't moving the right way when you move your sticks, then you change it to 1024. And this is just if you're using a, a satellite, Spectrum satellite. Um, if you have it on like S bus or something, then like I said, you just need to check the UART port and, uh, also in the receiver tab, check that the channel map is correct. So once you've done that and the bars are moving the correct way, um, I move on to modes. So the modes that I, I always select the same three modes for all my quads because it gets confusing if you try using different things on different quads. Like if I have fail safe for aux one on one quad and I have it for arm on another quad, then it's gonna be a bad situation when I'm flying if I don't remember what I'm using on what quad. So I just use the same thing on all the quads and that is angle, horizon, and air mode, but I only use air mode to fly. The only time I ever change it is when I'm about to land. And sometimes you might see my quad, when I'm coming in for a landing, it'll whip up like this. That's because I'm switching it to angle mode real quick right before I'm about to land, because it makes it much easier to land, in my opinion. 
But other than that, it's always in air mode. And then arm on a switch. You got all kinds of other settings. Um, now let me show you, let me grab my radio, I'll be right back. So to set up different modes, um, you'll see when I switch to different flight modes with my switch, you see how the little bars move and then it changes, shows you what mode I'm in. So you just want to set the uh, those bars to line up when you have it in that mode. So when I have it in air mode, which is all the way forward on my three position switch, uh, this little dot is in between these bars. And then when I move it up one, then the bar needs to be right here to line up with this little dot. So it's pretty simple to set up. Um, you can just hold down the mouse and slide it across to where you want. You can make it bigger and smaller by holding down on this to make it just exactly how you need it. Um, and then let me show you in the receiver tab. So like I was saying before, you turn on your radio and then the bars will be like this and see I'm raising the throttle, the throttle goes up, down, yaw, left and right, roll, and pitch. So if it's not moving the right way, you need to change those things that I said earlier. Um, and when you go up, the bar will go up. When you go down, the bar will go down. And then uh, for, for roll to the right, the bar goes up. And then roll to the left, the bar goes down. Throttle up, the bar goes up. Down, it goes down. And then yaw right goes up. And yaw left, the bar goes down. So that's how it needs to show. And if it doesn't, you need to change either your ports or in your configuration down here somewhere. Either this or this needs changed until those bars are moving the right way. So after I do the modes, make sure you click save always after everything you do. Then you can go to the motors tab and uh, here you can calibrate your ESCs, you can make sure your motors are spinning the right way. Um, you just click I understand right here and then you can use all of them at once with the master or you can do them one at a time using the mouse or you can also use the arrow keys and it'll move it one digit at a time to get it right at exactly where you want it. I use this to uh, determine where I want my minimum throttle at. So it's pretty cool to be able to do that. And then to calibrate your ESCs <clears throat> I can't really do it right now because I have my props on but um, I'm going to anyway but just don't do this at home always remove your props so you click I understand you raise the master all the way up 2000 is my maximum throttle then you plug in your battery Then after it does those beeps, you lower master all the way to zero. And after it does that last beep, you unplug the battery and you're done. The ESCs are calibrated. Um, then after that, the last thing I do is I go to setup and I click calibrate accelerometer. But I'm not going to do that right now because I don't have it sitting flat. It's sitting on top of the battery strap and it would mess it up. So when you got it sitting level, you click calibrate accelerometer, click reset Z axis, and then you're good to go. You should at this point. Oh, actually, I'll show you the LED strip too. So an LED strip, um, imagine it as you're looking down at the quad from the top. So up here would be the top of the, the front of the quad and down here would be the back of the quad. Okay, I'm going to clear this out so I can show you how to do it. 
So I have six LEDs that are in the back. So I want them down here because this is the back and I have six. So what you do is you click wire ordering mode and then you come over here and I got them right in the middle in the back. So I got six of them. So I click on it and then I hold down the mouse and I go over one, two, three, six. There's six LEDs. So then when I'm done with the amount that I have, I come over here and I click off wire ordering mode. And now you can see they're all numbered. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. So there's six of them. Then I highlight them to make them do what I want them to do. So they're highlighted. Then I come up here to LED functions. And what I like usually is I just use it as arm state. So I click on arm state. And then um, I like white for disarmed and blue for armed, so that's good. But if you want to change them, you just click on disarmed and then click on whatever color you want. Like if you want red for disarmed, see how it changes. Then when you're done with all of that, you just click save. And then you're done. So pretty simple. And at this point, um, oh man, sorry, I've totally forgot about the PIDs. I don't know how I skipped over that. I think because in my mind I was thinking that I wasn't going to do a PID tuning in this one. I was just going to say that the stock PIDs will work fine for you to start with. And I will do another video on how to tune your PIDs. But I'll show you my rates real quick. I got 205 for pitch and roll and then 215 for yaw. And then my super rate on pitch and roll is 50 and it's zero for yaw. And then I have 10 for expo on each of them. And it's at 1082 for pitch and roll and 866 for yaw. And then um, the PIDs, stock PIDs will work fine for you. Um, I'll do another video to show you how to tune your PIDs. So at this point in this video, you should be ready to fly. Um, assuming that you already have your receiver bound up and uh, yeah, that's about it. So stay tuned for more how-to videos and thank you for watching.